financial inclusion uh, of women is a very critical issue for us as Econet uh, in that it um, provides the basis for growth. Women have been noted uh, in our country to push sustainable uh, growth in our products and uh, they also have uh, influence uh, in getting other people to adopt our products and their activity ratios are actually better than uh, women. They are more stable than uh, men and they um, are more loyal. They um, also give us um, uh, more insights. They are freer to, to give their opinions on our products they are freer to test uh, and give suggestions as to how we can adjust our products. So women play a critical role in um, uh, assisting us in getting our products understood by communities, in assisting us in getting our products consumed by our communities. And uh, in Africa, they say if you teach a woman, uh, you have taught the village uh, per se. So. Uh, that's how we view uh, women being involved in financial inclusion. The challenge that uh, women have faced is that um, the control of funding uh, has been predominantly uh, put on the males. Uh, so the mobile phone itself, you will find some households have a single mobile phone and that will be in the hands of the woman. Uh, the, the man um, or the father of the house. Uh, so women would then need to uh, consult a lot and so forth. That has been the main hindrance. Uh, but once um, the ladies have the handsets, uh, you find that um, uh, it is easier to, to empower them with our products um, as opposed to those where the, the, the males have the handsets. So the critical thing for us has been to try and make sure that um, women have access to gadgets, um, either through uh, loans, through groups, through um, uh, partners uh, and so forth, so that they get that particular handset uh, for them to be able to consume our products. Uh, in certain instances, we've actually even uh, said that the women can uh, get together and use one single handset um, uh, so that they learn uh, using a, a group handset uh, where there is uh, a challenge of getting uh, the males to give them the handsets. What we managed to do is we used, uh, especially from an EcoShore perspective and EcoCash perspective, we used human-centered development in um, developing our product and that entailed going out into the communities to find out what the uh, communities live like, what the, they, they, what the gaps are, what their challenges are, and then come up with products that really assist the women in um, impacting their lives. So our approach has been to make use of uh, the communities uh, structures that are there. Uh, you find that um, already communities are built in uh, a unique African structure and uh, in Zimbabwe you find that there are groups within each community which uh, women belong to and we've used that particular approach to approach those groups to disseminate uh, information and to be the control groups for product um, uh, consumption. EcoShow is um, specifically addressing the challenge of women having no uh, access to financial services through um, getting women into groups. We followed uh, several um, communities and now have over 4,800 groups um, of which 80% of those are women groups 
um, uh, in certain circles they call them stockfills and those groups have uh, actually empowered several women uh, to, to, to access financial services. So each group has its own account um, and not just for uh, EcoShore products, but uh, we've extended uh, loans to, to, to such uh, groups. Um, uh, on top of that, um, uh, some of the groups that we have come up with uh, uh, have been empowered to start projects um, which generate incomes uh, so that they are able to pay their premiums. So we believe that empowering these groups, these uh, uh, over 4,800 groups, uh, has assisted us in actually getting a stable uh, premium level. The funeral-led um, societies, burial societies, uh, which we call, as we call them, um, have been structured in such a way that groups elect a committee and uh, most of those committees have women as chairpersons and secretaries um, and uh, these women uh, have leadership roles in leading the society uh, burial societies day-to-day uh, -day management that is collection of uh, premiums uh, and also disbursements of uh, claim funds um, and as I mentioned earlier, uh, the societies themselves have also uh, new projects um, uh, that they lead, uh, like be it uh, the rearing of uh, chickens, goats, uh, sowing, um, uh, and any other project that they may feel uh, that they can uh, embark on. And these projects generate income, not just to pay premiums, but also to, 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 to get the households on a better financial uh, footing. So that's how we have structured our burial societies. All burial societies have uh, what we call a burial society uh, eco-cash account, which operates just the say, in the same manner as a, a, a retail account. Um, so uh, you can collect uh, revenue through it, and you can pay suppliers and then you can pay your your premiums so we haven't just given them a, a, a an insurance account we've also given them a commercial account which the women actually handle and manage on a day-to-day -day basis investing in women um, uh, in this financial inclusion uh, strategy has actually helped us in sustaining our um, our revenues uh, of note uh, we have two revenue streams these are uh, the individuals who join on their phones uh, and then we've got these groups the burial societies on the individuals our activity ratio which uh, is uh, the rate at which individuals pay on a monthly basis um, is at about 70%. But on the groups themselves, we have uh, uh, over 95% activity ratio, which means that um, we don't have dropouts on the groups, whereas on the individuals, we have people who skip premiums, who drop off, uh, and so forth. So there's a sustainable uh, sort of um, uh, revenue a stream from groups as opposed to uh, the individuals. Uh, in terms of profitability, um, burial societies have given us um, the ability to have real testimonies. Uh, and testimonies, as you know, in insurance are the critical things uh, that drive business. Uh, whatever adverts you need uh, or, or whatever adverts you put out, uh, they can't beat uh, uh, a testimony from someone else. So these influential community groups uh, are, have been our marketing uh, source and uh, method, and we have grown to be the largest uh, insurance company by membership uh, within Zimbabwe through these particular uh, groups. 
and uh, uh, we must say that the the ladies have actually played a massive role in our growth uh, both revenue wise and uh, number of uh, heads covered the critical thing is uh, to for those who are considering offering these services through women uh, is to understand that women um, need to be listened to as we mentioned before uh, we've grown because we went to women using our human-centered development uh, method in developing our products and we listened to them and then we developed our products which were aligned to their thoughts uh, and uh, once you do that the uptake is easier but if you uh, use other methods um, where you develop your own products and try and sell it to women uh, you may get some resistance so operationally uh, it is critical for those who want to have uh, an improvement in their financial inclusion uh, products um, it is critical for them to go and listen first develop something and then offer it to the to the market and um, it's also critical to then get the women to offer testimonies uh, of the products that you will have uh, uh, developed because uh, their testimonies then get others to, 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 to make use of your products. Technology is technology. It's the same all over, but it's about the emotional appeal that will carry the day at the, yeah, uh, in terms of improving uptake. The role of partnerships uh, in our journey has been phenomenal. Uh, if you look at uh, how we have structured our product, we've got the product itself, we've got the customers, we then have the partnerships. Uh, our partners, um, because we are not everything to the consumer, we've made use of uh, partners. Our partnerships include uh, funeral service providers, uh, they also include uh, agents and they include um, women uh, led groups and uh, organizations. For example, in Zimbabwe, we've got um, Zimbabwe Farmers Union, um, uh, which predominantly is a grouping of smallholder uh, farmers. Uh, they have about 1.2. Uh, million uh, smallholder farmers. Of those, the the, the women uh, make up a majority of the membership. Uh, so we've uh, partnered them uh, uh, to go uh, into uh, the rural societies and rural areas to uh, work with the smallholder farmers. So when uh, the Zimbabwe Farmers Union uh, has its meetings within those small communities. We then come up with our uh, our products and share uh, um, uh, our products. We believe that uh, if you empower uh, women uh, in any society, you get far. Uh, we've experienced it. We've been in existence for five years and uh, our product uh, has been the fastest growing product uh, in terms of insurance because we have aligned with women uh, we have the majority of our policy holders as women uh, we believe that uh, the next generations are going to be influenced by uh, the empowerment of women and insurance is just one of uh, the services that we're offering but once bundled women will take it up and um, the testimonies that they provide are actually uh, the things that have driven our products so get your uh, the women involved in your products and you see uh, the uptake going through the roof mm -hmm.